trying to play with the lighting because uh, it's kind of weird at night. So I had to adjust my lighting. The lighting works out differently during the late evenings. So we're going to go ahead and get this quick lesson knocked out. Spirit jumped on me to go ahead and address this crazy man that popped up out of nowhere. And the funny thing to me is that the people that are reading Bible prophecy are the ones coming under attack. Nobody's bothering those that have been claiming to be us over the last century or so. The last two and a half centuries. They became us in the 1860s, where the imposters took on our identity. And really, you can make the argument to go back further to around the 8th century, where they began to convert over. But anyway, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and bring it out. Shalom. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity risking their lives and freedom to do so, and pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson, which nation is it? So using the Bible today, and by process of elimination, we're going to determine who fit the curses, who fit Bible prophecy that was told that we would be sold to the nations and that we would serve our enemies and be scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Which nation is it? I mean, if you remember taking the multiple choice test, now, two-thirds simp would fail this test. <clears throat> Multiple choice, process of elimination. It's not that hard. But the fact of the matter is, this is a spiritual book. And the Bible is only intended to wake up the elect. The rest are, bl are going to be blinded. That's why the Bible says that the rest were blinded. We're going to go ahead and bring it up. Which nation is it? And try to think back to your high school and middle school days where you were given a multiple choice test and would have to use process, process of elimination. I got a cough drop in, excuse me. So we're going to go ahead and bring it up. Let's play this video first. I got a special video for you tonight. Un unbelievable. <clears throat> so we're going to play this video and then we're going to go into Bible prophecy and determine which nation of people fit these prophecies. So without further ado, this is our hero for tonight. We're going to go ahead and play the video. Let's continue. I want you to listen to me. I don't want you to listen to me good. The black Hebrew Israelites, they're fake Jews. If you notice, all they do is stand on the street corners and cuss people out. They don't display any of the fruit of the spirit. They don't display the love of Christ. Their message of salvation is found in skin color and not the blood of Jesus. If you consider yourself a black Hebrew Israelite, you need to repent. Because even though that verse in the book of Revelation was referencing Jews from time back then, nowadays, many of you are fake Jews. Can black people have Jewish blood? Absolutely. 
Do all black people in America have Jewish blood? Absolutely not. In 70 AD, when General Titus went into Jerusalem and burnt down the temple, the Jews were scattered north, south, east, and west. Some fled to Africa, some went to Europe, some went other places. They intermarried. This is how you have Arab Jews, Russian Jews, Ukraine Jews, Ethiopian Jews. Do some studying, some real studying. So what he fails to realize is that even though you intermarry, even though you intermarry, you are what your father is. There was no such thing as mix. So the Israelite bloodline, the Israelite bloodline is scattered into all nations around the earth. That's what he fails to realize. We're pumping out lessons. There's probably several thousand lessons going out per day by the true prophets. So when you try to search for these lessons, they're being shadow banned. So the Most High is blinding those that he does not want. Just like that bug out with long hair and blonde braids. What prophet you know is going to dye his hair blonde and wear long hair like a woman? How many prophets you know of like that? You think our forefathers... Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob wore long blonde hair. Hells to the no. So if you don't understand Bible prophecy, you're going to be baffled, confused. This book is intended to be a mystery book for the prisoners, the captives. If you're in prison, you write in code. So this Bible was intended to be deciphered, if you will, by the elect. The Most High has a, an intended audience. <clears throat> so we are prisoners of hope. And if, you, and if you understand that through the spirit, that's talking about the elect. Let's go ahead and read these scriptures on the comment board. So only the elect can decipher this message which is shrouded in Bible prophecy. Brother Boyan Yasharala, Numbers 1 and 18. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names from 20 years old and upward by their poles. So there's no such thing as mix. The male spermal bloodline is scattered throughout all the earth. And you gotta keep in mind, Israelite men have a heritage of what? Multiple wives. We can prove that with at least 15 scriptures. So we have seed that's been sprinkled throughout the earth. So we look like the nations around the world. That's a fact. There's no such thing as a black Crayola Israelite that just jumped out of a crayon box. That is a made up narrative by Esau Edom, a so-called white man. He created the black white paradigm to cause confusion and to spread a covering cast over the minds of the nations. Let's go here. Brother Andre serving Yahawashai. Shalom, Barakatha. Tobit 13, verse 3. Confess him before the Gentiles, ye children of Israel, for he has scattered us among them. Now where's a good transition point from here? Somebody please post Ephesians 2, and 11. Get the verse before it and the verse after it, please. So we are scattered among the nations. And I almost feel like I don't even have to look down. We can just post here and I'll read from here. That's easier. So they're not teaching this truth in the mainstream. All the events that you see unfold today is because of great fear falling upon those that have enslaved the Most High's chosen children 
and deceive the whole world. And the Bible says that the devil should deceive the whole world. Devil means deceiver, slanderer, or false accuser. Comes from the Greek diablos. So it's talking about none other than Esau, Edom, Romans. They call themselves white, which means pure, wholesome, noble. They're not pure, wholesome, and noble. They are deceivers. You think the devil is going to come to you wearing a Freddy Krueger mask? That's make-believe Hollywood. The devil is going to speak softly with smooth words and lips oiled in butter. Somebody post that, please, in Psalms 50. Let's read this. Brother Bayan Yasharala, Ephesians 2, verse 10. For we are his workmanship created in Hamashiach, Yehoshai, unto good works, which the Most High hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Verse 11. Wherefore, remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. <coughs> Verse 12. That at that time ye were without Hamashiach being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without the most high in the world. So we were being called Gentiles. This taps into one of the mysteries of the Bible. So the Bible is giving salvation to the Israelites. that are a chosen blessed seed, but that fell off, that fell away, became Gentiles in the flesh. Who is Ephesians written to? So if you pick up a letter, you need to know who it is addressed to. Somebody post Ephesians 1, verse 1 and 2, please. Let's go back. Wow, this comment board is on fire. Brother Andre serving in Tobit 13, verse 3. Confess him before the Gentiles, ye children of Israel, for he has scattered us among them. Beautiful. Beautiful. Let's go back to Ephesians 2, verse 10. Let's, go, let's get right back to 11. Wherefore, remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Hamashiach, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without the most high in the world. Address to the Israelites. Let's go ahead and get verse 1. Whenever you pick up an epistle or a letter, you must first examine who is it addressed to. Somebody post Psalms 148, verse 14. Psalms 148 and 14. Brother Bayan Yasharal, Ephesians 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Yehoshad Hamashiach by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Hamashiach, Yehoshiach. Who are the saints? Ephesians 1, verse, verse 2. <coughs> Grace be to you and peace from the God of our Father and from the Lord, Yehoshiach, Hamashiach. So who are the saints? Brother Aranya Shalom Barakata and Brother Adam Nana. Psalms 148, verse 14. He also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, 
even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Praise ye the Lord. The children of Israel, that even means indeed. So the Bible is broken down by precepts. Isaiah chapter 28 says, through thy precepts I get understanding. So the massive, the massive sheeple out there are being deceived on purpose. Why? Because the Most High has already decreed that a small sanctuary is going to be preserved. A noble vine, an elect. Mass means death. So this book was never intended for a massive audience, but to the captives. We are prisoners of hope that can read and decipher the hidden message. Brother Adam Nana, Romans 9, verse 3. Well, I could wish that myself were a curse from Hamashiach or my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. So the covenants, old and new, are written to the Israelites. And the glory. The Israelites are going to inherit dominion and rulership on the earth. And the promises. Immortality. Not being able to die anymore. Not getting sick anymore. No more tears. No more sorrow. No more servitude. And the giving of the law. Well, the, the men of Israel were chosen to be prophets, pastors, teachers. All of the prophets in the Bible are Hebrew Israelites. Every last one of them are sons of God. And that's really the precise statement to make. All of the prophets in the Bible are the sons of God, or Yasharala. He is a prince of the power. Or rephrase that so that that does not become a stumbling block. Because Abraham and Isaac are also sons of the Most High. Before Jacob came, who changed his name to Israel. Let's go into the prophecies. <clears throat> Don't get it. Let's go here. The shadow ban in every lesson that we do because they are afraid. Matter of fact, I was watching Elder Monatazat's lesson. He tried to do a simple search for our videos and we're cranking out several thousand videos per day. Let's go to Baruch 4. Which nation is it? So imagine being back in middle school or high school given a multiple choice test. A book of Baruch chapter four, verse six. Ye were sold to the nations, not for your destruction, but because ye moved God to wrath. Ye were delivered unto the enemies who were sold on cargo slave ships. <clears throat> Matter of fact, the first ships, the first slave ships came out of Seville, Spain out of Europe because the Israelites ruled during the dark ages. So the very first slave ships came out of Seville, Spain, which is called the reverse slave trade because many of these Israelites, the so-called Native Americans, they were being sold to Europe and some of them wind up on a ship back to America, being sold to serve Esau and Edom. And you had the tribes of um, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi being sold out of Europe to come to the Americas. So you had the North American Indians going into Europe as slaves. Some of them were sold back to the Americas, but the bulk of the slaves out of Europe 
or Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Many of them are on the same ships. That's why the Bible says Judah and Israel were oppressed together. And all that took them captive failed to let them go. Let's get this one. Brother Andre serving Yahweh Shai. Isaiah 42, verse 24. Who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to the robbers? Did not the Lord, he against whom we have sinned? For they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his law. Beautiful. So we fell off because we broke a holy covenant. Which nation is it? The so-called Negroes, Native Americans, and Latinos. Brother Andre serving you have shot. Isaiah 42, verse 25. Therefore, he hath poured upon him the fury of his anger and the strength of battle, and it hath set him on fire round about. Yet he knew not, and it burned him, yet he laid it not to heart. So this is why the Bible says, hell hath enlarged herself because my people are gone into captivity. Where is that at? Isaiah chapter five. So the mainstream is afraid of us. They have lied to the American people. They have lied to the world. They have cast a covering cast or a veil of deception upon the nations around the world. Somebody post that in Isaiah 25, verse 7. So when the Bible says that the devil would deceive the whole world, it's talking about Esau, Edom, a so-called white man. Devil comes from the Greek, diabolos, which means slanderer, false accuser, or deceiver. The shadow ban in our lesson is extremely hard. Exactly. That's been going down going down that way for a long time now. The devil is scared. And we're going to cast the devil under our feet through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. Let's keep going. Here it is. Brother Andre serving Yahweh Shai. And Brother Aramya, Isaiah 25, verse 7. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations so that he is the most high is removing the veil of deception through the mouthpiece, his mouthpiece, his, the prophets. On the mouthpiece of the Lord are the prophets. So the sword is a, is a spiritual sword. A word, a word is a sword, and it is removing the veil of deception that has deceived the whole world. Somebody post that in, um, it's 1 Corinthians 10. Casting down imaginations. 1 Corinthians 10. Let's read this again. Brother Aramia and Brother Andre serving Yahweh Shai. Isaiah 25, verse 7. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. Beautiful. So evil E has done that. He has deceived the world. He put himself up as white which means pure, wholesome, righteous, holy, innocent. See, Brother Andre serving Yahweh Shai. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4. Beautiful. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the Most High, to the pulling down of strongholds. So we had a stronghold of false religions. Idols, false gods, worshiping in groves, worshiping in harlot houses. The stronghold that was on us 
is the spirit of Satan through his minions, the Edomites, Romans. So we're casting down the spiritual strongholds. Those are, <clears throat> those are what? Chains of darkness, chains of slavery. So now we're under a mental stronghold, not the elect, but the two-thirds of the lights. They are mentally enslaved and spiritually bound. So they're bound by false Christianity. They are bound by the doctrines of the philosophies of men. They are bound by these demonic strongholds. So this is a spiritual war. Let's read that again. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the Most High, through the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of of Hamashiach. So we are bounding Satan, so to speak, bounding the strongholds of false doctrines. So we're putting Satan under our feet. Matter of fact, I want to find that scripture because I keep, keep quoting it. I keep quoting it. Let's see if I can find it. Romans 16. See, Romans 16, verse 18. For they that are such, let's go to verse 17. <coughs> Romans 16, verse 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. So who deceived the whole world? Evil E. And he has a cohort of Israelites following him, followed by the other nations. Verse 18. For they that are such serve not our Lord, Yahushai Hamashiach, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. So the two-third men are simps. And they're being led by bugged out eaves that are very aggressive and manly. Okay? So that's the two-thirds that have embraced democracy, feminism, and white supremacy, along with false Christianity, followed by the other heathens around the world. Let's go to verse 19. For well, your obedience is come abroad unto all men, I am glad, therefore, on your behalf, but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. And the God of peace shall rule Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord, Yehoshai Hamashiach, be with you, Amon. See? So Satan, in the physical manifestation, is evil E. But he worships his daddy, a spiritual demon, Satan. So the Edomites are the children of Satan. They are the minions of the spiritual demon, Satan. They worship him on a high level. Matter of fact, let's go to, um, I think it's 1 John 3. First John One moment. First John two. First John chapter two. Let's go to verse twelve. I write unto you. We gotta go to verse eleven. Book of First John, chapter two, verse eleven. 
I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. So the elect are predestined, preordained to be delivered out of the major judgments that are coming. The elect are already pre <laughs> predestinated, preselected, chosen. Let's read that again. 1 John 2, verse 12. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. Yahushai Amashiach. Verse 13. I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, ye have known the father. I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. So, the, who is the wicked one? Let's go to 1 John 3. 1 John 3, verse 11. For well, this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one and slew his brother and therefore slew him because his works were evil and his brothers righteous. So we know that Cain was reincarnated as the wicked. Esau, Edom. Read Malachi 1 or 7. Read Psalms 22 or 16. And read Job 9 and 24. For the spirit of the murderous bloodthirsty Cain transcended down into Esau, Edom, the wicked. Alam, beloved, Barakatha. Let's go into which nation is it? I'm going to go back to the main lesson. Let's go to Baruch 4 or 6. A book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 6. Ye were sold to the nations, not for your destruction, but because ye moved the Most High to wrath. Ye were delivered unto the enemies, for ye provoked him that made you by sacrificing unto devils, and not to the Most High. Ye have forgotten the everlasting power that brought you up, and ye have grieved Jerusalem that nursed you. So the Israelites were sold into slavery. The Israelites were dispersed. The diaspora. The Israelites became like the heathen and took on heathen customs. Which nation is it? My post Hosea 1 verse 10. And Jeremiah 17 and 4, please. Let's go to Baruch 2, verse 4. Moreover, he hath delivered them to be in subjection to all the kingdoms that are round about us, to be as a reproach and desolation among all the people round about, where the Lord hath scattered them. We are a reproach unto the nations, a byword and a proverb. Nigga, eight, spit, jigaboo, gentile, tonto. See? Why? Because we became cut off from our heritage. Brother Andre serving Yahushai, Jeremiah 17, verse 4. And thou, even thyself shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. And that forever means a long time. Did not we read in Isaiah chapter 5, my people are gone into captivity, therefore hell hath enlarged herself. So that fire 
is the fiery trial of affliction, slavery. Remember in Isaiah chapter 5? Let's just read it. So that fire represents the judgment from the Most High. Let's go to Isaiah 5. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 5, verse 13. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge, and their honorable men are famished, and their multitude dry up with thirst. Therefore, hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure, and their glory and their multitude and their pomp, and he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. See, so that fire that was kindled is the fiery trial of adversity. Let's read it again. Now, I'm going to show you what's heavy here is Jeremiah knew what his heritage was. And he was a Hebrew Israelite. This is proving what? Reincarnation. Did not Jeremiah know his heritage? See that? So this is showing you right here Jeremiah is going to be reincarnated and come back as a slave. The international bankers are going to be reborn as slaves. Those that don't make it on this side. Or the high level elites. But most of them are going to be preserved on this side. And be the first fruits of slavery. International bankers. Or the Andre serving Yehoshai. Jeremiah 17, verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land that thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever a long time. We've been captives for over 2,000 years. So we're in the third day, which is the third millennium. Our redemption is near. For the Aramia, Hosea 1, verse 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto thee, ye are not my people. There it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. So the imposters have always called themselves us. They've always perpetrated to be the chosen ones. So who are these people occupying the Holy Land today? Why isn't vocab no class Malone harassing them? Why isn't he questioning them? Where are the scrutinizers questioning those that don't fit Bible prophecy. Where they at? Why are the ones that fit Bible prophecy coming under fire, being attacked? Why? Because the Most High made it so. So we became cut off. Brother Andre serving Yahawashai. Deuteronomy 28, verse 37. And thou shall become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whether the Lord will lead thee. So the Lord raised up the nations against us because we went off. We stopped following his ways. Let's go back to Baruch, chapter 2. The book of Baruch, chapter 2, verse 4. Moreover, he hath delivered them to be in subjection to all the kingdoms that are round about us to be as a reproach and a desolation among all the people round about where the Lord has scattered them. See, who's serving at the bottom? Three-fifths of a man marching and singing, we shall overcome, fighting for equal rights. First fire, last hire, who was cut off from the Holy Land and embarked on journeys 
of and cargo slave ships to be sold to the nations. <coughs> Let's go to Psalms 44 and 11. A book of Psalms, chapter 44, verse 11. Thou hast given us like sheep appointed for meat and has scattered us among the heathen. So we are a prey. <coughs> That's what it means, like meat. Sheep appointed for meat. So we were given as a prey to the nations. Matter of fact, let's go here. We read that already in um, in Isaiah chapter forty-two. Let's go to let's go to um, Ezekiel thirty-six, verse four. Who became a prey? A book of Ezekiel, chapter 36. Let's go to verse 3. Let's go to verse, we got to go to the top. A book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, verse 1. Also, thou son of man, prophesy unto the mountains of Israel, and say, ye mountains of Israel. Hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, because the enemy has said against you, Aha, even the ancient high places are ours in possession. Who says that? Aha, aha, like in the movie Coming to America. If I say it, they'll mess with the video. See, the Bible is a true book. Amalek, according to the scriptures. Verse 3. Therefore, prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord God, because they have made you desolate and swallowed you up on every side, that ye might be a possession unto the residue of the heathen, and ye are taken up in the lips of talkers and are an infamy of the people. So we are despised, we are despised, talked down upon, abuse. So the people that have replaced us, the imposters, are speaking down on us, calling us worthless, calling us cattle, dirty. Verse 4. <clears throat> Therefore, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord power to the mountains and to the hills, to the rivers and to the valleys, to the desolate waste, and to the cities that are forsaken, which became a prey and derision to the residue of the heathen that are round about. A prey. So we are devoured by the nations that hate us. Read Luke 1 and 68 through 77. Verse 5. Therefore, let's say it, the Lord God, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia, which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart, with the spiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. So Israel, the Holy Land, and the people are devoured. So who says that? Aha! Come on now. Look at the movie Coming to America. The big nose little hat man of the Maccabees 144. Psalm 70, verse 3. Let them be turned back for a reward of their shame that say, Aha! Aha! See? Well, the Bible is a true book. The little hat big nose people says that, aha, shut your ass up. The Most High is going to judge you devils. <coughs> Brother Adam Donna, Lamentations 2, 
verse 16. All thine enemies have opened their mouth against thee. They hiss and gnash the teeth. They say, we have swallowed her up. Certainly this is the day that we look for. The Bible says, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. All thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. Amalek, Ishmael, Ammon, Tyre and Zidon, Moab, Elam, Esau, Edom, all of our enemies are going to be our slaves. The Bible says it. The Lord has determined it. So they carried us away captive on cargo slave ships. Brother Maccabees 144. Psalms 137 verse 1. A book of Psalms chapter 137 verse 1. By the rivers of Babylon there we sat down. Yea, we wept and we remember Zion by the rivers of Babylon. There we sat down, yea, we wept, and we remember Zion. We hang our hearts upon the willows in the midst thereof. Let's jump down to verse 7. For there they carried us away captive. Let's go back to verse 3, excuse me. Book of Psalms, chapter 137, verse 3. For there they that carried us away captive required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of those songs of Zion. Who was known for singing the old gospel spirituals, working in the hot field, working as slaves, singing swing low, sweet chariot, coming forth to carry me home. Who's known for doing that? Shalom, Bilal, brother. Baratatha. Shalom, Israel, triple seven. Well, the Bible is identifying who has been devoured and cast out as a prey. The Israelites, who's known for singing those spiritual gospel hymns. It was not the cave people or the big nose little hats. It was the Israelites, particularly Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Let's go back. See, <clears throat> Psalms 44, verse 11. Thou has given us like sheep appointed for me and has scattered us among the heathen. So we are devoured. The Most High calls us a what? A worm. Fear not, thou worm, Jacob. So we are being devoured by the nations. The proverbial fowls of the air, and the beasts of the field. But all they that devour thee shall be devoured, and all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. Let's go to additions to Esther. Additions to Esther, chapter 4, verse 4. Declare unto us, that in all nations throughout the world there was scattered a certain malicious people that had laws contrary to all nations and continually despised the commandments of kings. So as the uniting of our kingdoms honorably intended by us cannot go forward. So our laws run contrary to the laws of the other nations. So just like in Esther's time and under the Persians, we were being called out or refusing to bow down to the laws of the land. That's going to happen again because we believe in the covenant, a word of promise. We believe in the most highest laws over the laws of the land. Now we follow the laws of the land except they begin to intercede with the scriptures. For example, the mot be. So we follow the laws of the land until we're not able to. 
we're not going to penetrate our flesh. It's against our Bible. We're not going to be joined or merged with the beast or married unto this system through the might be. Read Revelations 13, or 16 and 18, or 16 through 18, excuse me. Let's visit the comment board. Yep, Brother Andre serving you how shot. Ezekiel 39, verse 22. So the house of Israel shall know that I am the Lord, their power from that day and forward. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity because they trespassed against me. Therefore hid I my face from them and gave them into the hand of their enemies. So fell they all by the sword. See? So we were cast out and cast down. We were sold to the nations. We gave up our name for a curse pursuant to the scriptures. So we fit the book. We are the children of the living God. We are the children of promise, the noble seed, a royal bloodline, and the global elites are hurt and running scared. They're ramping up events, more false flags, more deceptions, more boogeymen, new variants, new demons, new threats, more fear campaigns. Why? Because the children of Israel are waking up and the global elites are moving with great speed and great veracity to try to deceive the masses and to try to force implement the might be. Let's go here next. So we're focused on the central theme. Which nation is it? Nobody comes after the imposters. They can call themselves us. They can steal our nationality, our heritage, and they don't fit one single prophecy in this book. Not one. Let's go back. Additions to Esther 4, verse 4 declared unto us that in all nations throughout the world there was scattered a certain malicious people that had laws contrary to all nations and continually despised the commandments of kings so as the uniting of our kingdoms honorably intended by us cannot go forward. So the Israelites are a major stumbling block a major obstacle to the United Nations New World Order, <clears throat> a global economic forum, because their laws run contrary to the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. We don't believe in having our DNA messed with. We don't believe in becoming transhuman. We don't believe in merging beasts with humans or humans with machine. We don't believe in transfiguring or altering our molecular structure. Our laws run contrary to the global elites. The United Nations effort to build a one world government, a one world order, a one world religion, where all nations become equal based on a newly created, man-made, altered, genetic molecular structure. We don't believe in conforming to the beast. We will not be compromised by the beast. And we are married unto the Most High, Yehovah Hashem, Yehovah Shai. And we will be faithful, the faithful city of the house of David. Let's go. If you got to come for us, we're going to stand firm as a brazen wall, gene splicing, all types of wickedness. <clears throat> if I go into detail, I'll take down the damn video. 
Why are they doing this? Because we are a chosen seed, a holy royal priesthood, a holy nation, a royal priesthood. So they want to alter what the Most High has made pure. A holy bloodline. Let's keep going. Let's go to book of Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 16. I will scatter them also among the heathen whom neither they nor their fathers have known and I will send a sword after them till I have consumed them. Which nation is it? So in 70 AD, Jerusalem was taken down with great slaughter. Jerusalem was cast out, the people, okay? <clears throat> and we were scattered throughout the nations. First, we fled through the Atlas Mountains into northern and western Africa. Some of us went east into eastern Africa. During the sub-Saharan slave trade between 600 and 1100 AD, we were sold by the sons of Ishmael, the so-called Arabs. Between 1600 and 1850, the North Atlantic slave trade, we were sold to Edom, followed by the other nations. So we became commodities, gifts, slaves to the nations. All nations benefited of our captivities. All nations. And during 70 AD, Jerusalem would fall to the Edomites, the Romans. They are identified as the wicked in the Bible. Pursuant to Job 9 and 24, pursuant to Malachi 1 and 7, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. By default, the sons of the righteous must be in a fallen state if the earth is given to the hands of the wicked. Our very name, Israel, comes from the Hebrew Yasharala. He is a prince of the power. Yah. He, Shah, Prince, Allah, power. Which nation is it that were packed like sardines on cargo slave ships? You tell me. Yes, Brother Aramya. <coughs> Brother Aramya, 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a fallen away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Did not we just say Jerusalem fell in 70 AD when Vespasian and Titus came in with great slaughter? So which nation is it? Who is the man of sin, the son of perdition? Rome. Edom, Esau, see that? Which nation is it? So that man of sin is Esau, Edom. Did not the Romans take down Jerusalem in 70 AD and teach us that the law, statutes, and commandments are done away with? <coughs> you tell me. Second, so Israel fell away. Did not we read? Job 9 and 24, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. Were we not given a caveman as our Lord and Savior, as the Most High, as the angels? You tell me. Let's read that again. Brother Aramia, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Verse 4. We got to go back up to 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come 
a fallen away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, as the Most High, sitteth in the temple of the Most High, showing himself that he is the Most High, who gave us a false Messiah. Type in God on your Google search engine, or Jesus. Let's go ahead and do that now. Let's type in God, who put themselves up as the Most High, as our Lord and Savior. <clears throat> Look at this. See that? Who put themselves up as Adam, as the angels, as the Israelites, as our Lord and Savior, as the Most High? Who did that? Look at this. Who did this? So is the Bible lying? Is the Bible a false accuser? A false witness? Absolutely not. Let's go back to that. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. No, verse 4. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he, as the Most High, sitteth in the temple of the Most High, showing himself that he is God. So the Bible is the most accurate book on planet Earth. So Esau Edom fills the role of the physical demon, the physical manifestation of the spiritual demon Satan, or the devil. Devil means deceiver, slanderer, or false accuser. So we all have to be retaught, brainwashed by the word, because the devil deceived the whole world. A so-called white man, he's not white. White means pure, wholesome, innocent, righteous, guiltless. This devil is not guiltless. Okay, he has a right to remain silent. Everything that he has done and said will be held against him. He does not have a right to a mediator because our Lord is saved. Because Shai says, I am not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So this devil is guilty as charged. Let's read this one. Brother Andre serving Yahweh Shai. <coughs> verse Maccabees 3, verse 48. And laid open the book of the law, wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. Who did this? Which nation is it? Go back to middle school and high school mindset. I remember middle school and high school well. And I remember the multiple choice tests. So I'm reminiscing back when I was a young man, when I had to decide which one is it. See, well, this man is being revealed in these last days. That's the devil that the Bible speaks of. That's right. Made some of these images look like Zeus. You got to pay for that. Yep, Brother Andre serving you have a shot. Ezekiel 28, verse 2. Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of the Most High in the midst of the seas. Yet thou art a man and not God, though thou set thine heart as the heart of the Most High. Well, this man has a God complex. So well, he's trying to alter our DNA <clears throat> and trying to get us to be merged with machine so that we can be permanently controlled, permanent slaves. Let's go back. Let's go to Baruch 3, 
verse 8. The book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 8. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity, where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse, and to be subject to payments according to all the iniquity of our fathers, which departed from the Lord our God. Hear, Israel, the commandments of life. Give ear to understand wisdom. So we fit the book. We fit the curses. We were scattered and sold to the nations. We are the children of the Most High that did not know our heritage, did not know our nobility, did not know that we were a royal priesthood, a holy nation that were cut off from our heritage. Baruch 3, verse 10. How happeneth it, Israel, that thou art in thine enemy's land, that thou art waxen old in a strange country, that thou art defiled with the dead. But we are defiled with the other nations. The heathens are the dead. The heathens did not get the promises. They did not get the spirit of the Lord upon them, the spirit of wisdom. Verse 11, the book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 11. That thou art counted with them that go down into the grave. Thou hast forsaken the fountain of wisdom. Well, that fountain goes back to Jeremiah chapter 17. So we are in the valley of the dry bones. We fit Ezekiel chapter 37, the valley of the dry bones. We just read it. See that? <coughs> the Israelites are amongst the dead, are dwelling in the land of the shadow of death, gross darkness, and the valley of the dry bones. Let's read this again. Brother Andre serving Yahweh Shai, Isaiah 42, verse 22. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes, and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey, and none deliver, for a spoil, and none saith, restore. So we are in spiritual chains of prison and literal prison houses. Let's go to Ezekiel 11 or 16. Therefore, say, thus saith the Lord God, although I have cast them far off among the heathen, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. So the elect are being gathered by the word. He is in the midst of Israel. So wherever two or more are gathered in his name, he is right there in the midst. So a small sanctuary, a remnant, Ezekiel 11, verse 17. Therefore, say, thus saith the Lord power, I will even gather you from the people and assemble you out of the countries where ye have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel. So this is going to come simultaneously with the apocalypse. Apocalypse is, that's what's being revealed in the last days. And that's going to be the final cataclysmic event, the judgments written of in Revelations, where this earth is going to be judged by the spirit of the Lord. And America is going to be burned with fire by the nuclear missiles. Various other parts of the land around the earth are going to be burned with nuclear missiles. Well, the other parts of the earth are going to be rebuilt. Well, America is going to become a memorial likened unto Sodom and Gomorrah as to how not to live. A memorial of unclean creatures, desert animals. Let's go here. 2 Maccabees 1, or 7. 
or book of 2 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 7. Gather those together that are scattered from us. Deliver them that serve among the heathen. Look upon them that are despised and abhorred, and let the heathen know that thou art our God. I post Joel 2 and 27, please. A book of Joel chapter 2, verse 27. Second Maccabees 1, verse 27. Gather those together that are scattered from us. Deliver them that serve among the heathen. Look upon them that are despised and abhorred, and let the heathen know that thou art our God. Punish them that oppress us, and with pride do us wrong. Plant thy people again in thy holy place, as Moses has spoken. So the Israelites are going to be planted, a noble vine, a holy people, a royal priesthood. Brother Adam Nana, Brother Aramia, and Brother Andre Servant in Havashai. A book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord, your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. So he's going to put the heathen to shame. <coughs> That's what's coming. All those that despise us, somebody post that. They're going to be put to shame. Those that despise and hate and afflict us. Where's that at? Somebody post Isaiah 41, verse 11 through 13, please. Go ahead and go to 14. Isaiah 41. Verse 11 through 14. So the Bible goes together like a beautiful hand in glove. The Israelites were cast out of the Holy Land. The Israelites were cut off from our heritage. The Israelites were devoured by the other nations and became a prey to the heathen and Gentile nations. The Israelites are the chosen people, the so-called Negroes and Native Americans and Latinos. The Israelites, Yasharala, he is a prince of the power. Let's go ahead and read this. Brother Aranya and Brother Adam Nana, let's go to Isaiah 41. I'm going to start reading. I'm going to start reading at verse 9. Thank you, brothers, for posting the scriptures. The book of Isaiah, chapter 41, verse 9. Thou, whom I have taken from the ends of the earth, and called thee from the chief men thereof, and said unto thee, Thou art my servant, I have chosen thee, and not cast thee away. So we were temporarily cut off not permanently done away with. Isaiah 41, verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Yahweh Shai, our Lord and Savior, is his right hand. Isaiah 41, verse 11. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. Well, these other nations are going to be put to shame, and they're going to be brought down to be slaves, peasants. They're going to be disgraced by words and proverbs. They're going to know what it feels like to be at the bottom, to be afflicted, to be discriminated against, persecuted. Isaiah 41, verse 11. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them and shall not find them, even them that contended with thee, 
they that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. But when you read the previous chapter, Isaiah chapter 40, the nations are called nothing. So they're going to go back in their rightful place at the bottom. They were created to serve Israel. I'm going to get ready to close out. Let's go to Isaiah 22. I've got a lot of scriptures, but I'm not going to read all of these. We've already gone over a certain time. Let's go to Isaiah 22, verse 17. The book of Isaiah, chapter 22, verse 17. Behold, the Lord will carry thee away with a mighty captivity and will surely cover thee. He will surely violently turn and toss thee like a ball into a large country. So the ships move on the water. They toss to and from like a ball. If you have a look at a buoy on the water, it moves to and from. So these cargo slave ships brought us to the lands of our captivity, primarily America, the daughter of Babylon. Why you think they're shadow banning our videos, taking down our channels, deleting our video lessons, and we're cranking out several thousand videos per day. Do a search for them on YouTube. You'll be lucky to find maybe one or two when several thousand are going out per day. This devil is scared. If I was the devil, I would be scared too. <coughs> I would be terrified if I was the devil. Let's read this again. The book of Isaiah chapter 22, verse 17. Behold, the Lord will carry thee away with a mighty captivity and will surely cover thee. He will violently turn and toss thee like a ball into a large country. There thou shalt die, and there the chariots of thy glory shall be the shame of the Lord's house. And I will drive thee from thy station and from thy state shall he pull thee down. But we were brought down to a low estate. Those that were never thought of to have worn the crown are kings in that place where it was said unto us, we are not his people. We're being told we are the sons of the living power. How are we being told that? Time for a water break. If somebody can please put the answer on the comment board. What does it mean there you shall be told ye are the sons of God. How are we being told that? <clears throat> by the prophets, by the prophets, the mouthpiece of the Lord. Let's get ready to close out. I'm going to go to Baruch chapter 2. The book of Baruch chapter 2, verse 30. For well, I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff-necked people. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. Well, we're being called back into remembrance through the spirit of the Lord's mouth, the prophets. Baruch 2 and 31. And shall know that I am the Lord, their power, for I will give them a heart and ears to hear. So the elect of Israel, the elect of Jacob, has circumcised ears and circumcised eyes, a spiritual vision, and a spirit of discernment to be able to decipher the message. Salvation to the elect of Israel, judgment to the nations that sold us and oppressed us, Baruch 2 and 32. 
and they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name. The elect is doing that. Who's calling on Yahweh, the Father, in the name of his son, Yahweh Shai? His elect, Baruch 2 and 33, and return from their stiff neck and from their wicked deeds, for they shall remember the way of their fathers which sinned before the Lord. And I will bring them again into the land which I promised with an oath unto their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they shall be lords of it, and I will increase them, and they shall not be diminished. So when we are restored back into the Holy Land, it's going to be forever. The cavemen will no longer take us down. These rice-eating people will no longer take us down. The squid-eating folks will no longer take us down. Those that worship a rock will no longer take us down. Baruch 2 and 35. The little hat people will no longer take us down. Baruch chapter 2, verse 35. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them to be their God, and they shall be my people. And I will no more drive my people of Israel out of the land that I have given them. So he's going to plant us forever. <clears throat> Let's go to First Chronicles 17. The book of First Chronicles chapter 17 verse 9. Also, I will ordain a place for my people, Israel, and will plant them, and they shall dwell in their place, and shall be moved no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness waste them any more, as at the beginning. Now, we got to read a little further up on this. So David is going to be on the scene. King David, when this occurs, when Israel is restored back into the Holy Land. Let's read this again. Let's go up. First Chronicles 17, verse 7. Now therefore, thus shall thou say unto my servant David, thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, even from following the sheep, that thou shouldest be ruler over my people Israel. And I have been with thee, whithersoever thou hast walked, and have cut off all thine enemies from before thee, and have made thee a name like the name of the great men that are in the earth. Also, I will ordain a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, and they shall dwell in their place, and shall be moved no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness waste them any more, as at the beginning. Well, we're reading about the tabernacle of David. And when you study the tabernacle of David, all nations serve Israel. So that's going to be reset. This is the real global reset. This is the real new world order. Brother Aramia, Psalms 50, verse 5. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Who made a blood covenant with the Most High? The Israelites. <coughs> Brother Andre serving your house shot. Psalms 116, verse 13. I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. Beautiful. So the cup of salvation is rulership, promise to the house of David, to the children of Israel, the nobility, the royal bloodline, the blessed seed of the house of Jacob. 
Matter of fact, 1 Chronicles 17, verse 11. 1 Chronicles 17, verse 11. And it shall come to pass when thy days be expired, that thou must go to be with thy fathers, that I will raise up thy seed after thee, which shall be of thy sons, and will establish his kingdom. For the bloodline descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the royal noble bloodline, the regal seed of the house of David, is back on the earth today. Verse 12, 1 Chronicles 17, verse 12. He shall build me a house, and I will establish his throne forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. And I will not take my mercy away from him, as I took it from him that was before thee. So Yahweh Shai is going to arrive on the scene and occupy the throne of his father David. And when you read in Psalms chapter 86, King David says, I will call on his name in time of trouble. And that's also in Psalms 116. So we are close. We are close. They're going to push more government mandates are going to try to implement this new world order by merging man with machine, the digital network, the grid system. That is the way ahead. That was what the Global Economic Forum planned and intends to execute. Which nation is it? The Israelites. Let's read this one. Deuteronomy 30. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 1. And it shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse, which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind, among all the nations, whether the Lord thy God hath driven thee. So we are remembering ourselves, recognizing that these curses are a sign as to who the Lord's chosen anointed people are. Deuteronomy 30, verse 2. And shall return unto the Lord thy God, and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thine heart and with all thy soul. So we are beseeching the Most High, making supplication unto him, begging in prayer to be delivered and to be restored back into rulership. Deuteronomy 30, verse 3, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy power hath scattered thee. If any of thine be driven out unto the outmost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy power gather thee and from thence will he fetch thee. That's why we're seeing chariot sightings every day. The so-called UFOs are pre-postured, pre-positioned to deliver his elect, spoken of in Matthew chapter 24, verses 29 through 31. They're going to gather his elect from the four corners of the earth. Deuteronomy 30, verse 4. If any of thine be driven out unto the outmost parts of heaven. From thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. And the Lord thy power will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possess, and thou shalt possess it, and he will do thee good, and multiply thee above thy fathers. We read the same thing in Baruch, 
chapter 2. We're going to be restored back to the Holy Land. Let's read a little more about Yahawashai coming back with the chariot or great fathership, followed by the hosts of heaven, little chariots or little so-called UFOs. So he's coming with the fathership, a star, followed by the hosts of heaven, the so-called UFOs. Why you think they stood up a 24 hour a day, seven days a week, UFO quick reaction, quick, quick response task force, or so-called UFOs. Brother Andre serving you how shot. Let's read. Yeah. Andre serving you how shot. Matthew 24, verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So these other tribes of the earth are going to mourn because they're going to go into slavery, and they're going to be assaulted with high-energy concentrated laser beam fire. Matthew 24, verse 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the one end of heaven to the other. So we're close. And the Lord, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh is going to gather his elect, the cream of the crop of the house of David, of the house of Jacob. The children of Israel. We got next, Lord willing. Yeah, this is this is what we're reading about. These chariots. Let's read this. Brother um, R. W. O. The light of Yahweh. Second Exodus thirteen verse three. And I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven, and when he turned his countenance to look all the things trembled that were seen under him. The hosts of heaven are the thousands from heaven. Somebody post Psalm 68 or 17. That's the chariots of the Lord, the so-called UFOs. There's a reason they stood up, a quick response, quick reactionary UFO task force. <coughs> From the RWO, the light of Yahweh. So well, this is Yahweh Shai we're reading about, coming back with the chariots of heaven. Isaiah 60, verse 8. Who are these that fly as a cloud and as the doves to their windows? See, those are the chariots of the Lord. And the elect are going to get the benefit of entering into the chambers of the Lord. Brother Andre serving Yahweh Shai. Psalm 68, verse 17. The chariots of the Most High are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them, as in Sinai, in the holy place. That's right, the Bible says, as birds flying, he shall defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. His elect, that's in Isaiah 31, verse 7 or and 8, I believe. See, the hosts of heaven. Let's go back to Brother RWO, the light of Yahweh. 2 Exodus 13, verse 3. And I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. So these chariots are going to kick ass and destroy the United Nations armies or militaries. This is a good stomping stopping point. I'll go ahead and close out there. Hopefully this has been an edifying lesson. It's being triple shadow banned. Nevertheless, we're going to keep it moving. The devil is hurt and scared. Brother GMS in the truth, Orlando, Isaiah 31, verse 5. As birds flying, 
So will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem, defending also. He will deliver it, and passing over, he will preserve it. So he's going to preserve the, the great cluster of the vintage wine, a fine great cluster, his elect, as birds flying. So these cherries are going to look like a flock of geese migrating south for winter. They're going to cover the sky with chariots of the Lord are thousands upon thousands of angels. They're not little green men from Mars. If you believe that, you're bogged out. He saw Edom push that in his movies. But they know that the chariot is a large father ship that looks like a mountainside. They showed us in the movie Independence Day and War of the Worlds. Why you think they're monitoring this through NASA? and standing up a surveillance task force. So everything we teach, look at what's happening real time. Measure the times and the events. So we're supposed to measure the times daily to bounce it off the backdrop of Bible prophecy. Let's read that again. Brother Ernest L. Isaiah, a book of Isaiah chapter 31 or five. As birds flying, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem, defending also. He will deliver it, and passing over, he will preserve it. We just read about deliverance and salvation. Jacob is promised that. Elect. Israel. We just read about deliverance. So you bugged out walking around talking about, I'm saved. I'm saved by the Lord. You see, people do not understand the scriptures. We're not saved yet until our Lord comes to save your goodness. So hopefully this has been edifying. My voice is dry. Shalom, beloved lady. Love, hopeful elect lady of the Howard. And once again, thank you for the beautiful garments. And I want to give all praises to Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Hashem, or Kwakadash. Double honor and respect to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, and pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad. Much respect and love to the beloved ladies of the hopeful elect of the house of David. Let's read this. Or the Andre serving Yahweh. Matthew 24, verse 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. We must endure until the end. Brother GMS in the truth, Orlando. Jeremiah 8, verse 20. The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. Woo! <laughs> hey, this brother, <laughs> this brother is dangerous. You can't be bugged out and walk up on him. <laughs> I'm saved. <laughs> Walking around, bugged out, in a damn laser beam is going to come and zap you. You're going to be saved. Powder dust, cocoa powder dust, saved to, <laughs> to go into the ground, brought down to the grave, beat to powder. Let's read that again. Of the GMS in the truth, Orlando, Jeremiah 8, verse 20. The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. Well, the new harvest. The harvest is the end of the world. It represents a what? A change in the season. A changing of the age. So we're waiting for the end of the world. That's the harvest. If somebody can just post that for the record. In Matthew chapter 13. Somewhere around, it's in the uh, 30s. So the harvest is the end of the world. So we're waiting for what? 
the end of the age of Edom, Rome. That's what we're waiting for. The end of the age of darkness, gross darkness is what we're waiting on. The end of the age of death, the end of the age of ignorance, the end of the age of gross darkness and chaos, Babylon or Babylon, confusion. So Barakatham, Kwan Yasharala, and Abad Babal. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. We got next, Lord willing. Brother Aramya, Matthew 13 and 39. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers are the angels. So, so who? The tares. Those are the children of the wicked one. The offspring and the descendants of the Edomites. They are the wicked ones. Brother GMS in the truth, Orlando, Matthew 30 and 30. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. So the Edomites are going to be burned and judged and a remnant of the high-level global elite are going to be salvaged, gathered together to go into the pit of slavery. We got next, Lord willing, Kwam Yasharala, Kwam Yasharala, Kwam Yasharala, and Abad Baba, Bubba Kasha, Shalak Royam, Shalak Royam, Adawam, Mashapatyam, Shalom.